everybody, Dr. Susan Brown, Director of the Center for Better Bones. Today I'm really pleased to have with me one of my favorite physician colleagues, Dr. Stephen Masley from St. Petersburg, Florida. You might remember a couple years ago I introduced you to Steve and his wonderful book on heart health. Now Steve has taken all his clinical information and written an excellent cutting edge book on brain health. So Steve, welcome. Uh, Delighted to be with you today. Hey, Dr. Brown, it's really, it's always a pleasure to get to talk with you. <laughs> yes, it certainly is a pleasure to talk with you. And I know a little bit about this book on brain health. I want you to tell us what you found, but first tell us how is your book different from so many people that are just putting together secondary information, what they can read in the literature. Tell us about the research you did to come up with this new information. Well, in our clinic, we measure up to a hundred markers of aging. Wow, um, memory and brain speed, artery plaque growth, bone density, something I'm sure you care about. And right. we look at that with all these lifestyle markers, the food you eat, your nutrient intake, your fitness, your stress management, and your toxin exposure. So we have like over a thousand people in a database that we followed for more than a decade. And we can actually see which lifestyle factors impact your bone, your heart, but I mean, importantly, the brain, since the number one most expensive disease in America today is memory loss, I think it's, it's becoming a crisis and it's supposed to double in just the next 12 years. So yeah. memory loss rates are like skyrocketing and we've got to do something about it. So that's really, so our research looking at all these age markers with lifestyle and we've been able to show which things help improve your brain? Which things prevent memory loss? And it turns out many of these things are also good for your heart and your bones. So, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't surprise you or I that something that would be good for one part of your body is good for another. But right. I just love seeing some of these relationships. And that's really what the Better Brain um, solution is all about. So show us, show us that's based on clinical research. I'm working with thousand patients, the Better Brain Solution, Stephen Masley. It's just come out and you can certainly learn more about it on drmasley.com. But right now, Steve's going to tell us a little bit about your major findings on memory and brain health. So we know that probably the number one factor that contributes to memory loss is elevated blood sugar and insulin resistance. And let me try to clarify that so that when we eat carbs, especially refined carbs, our sugar levels tend to shoot up and our insulin comes up to match that and it pushes the cell, the energy into the cell to be stored as energy. So insulin is basically the energy storage hormone. Okay. And if we were really active and we ate super healthy food like you and I would recommend, that's a beautiful balance. But with the standard American diet today, way too many people are eating too many refined carbs so they're eating more bread and potatoes and rice and sugar. Mm -hmm. And actually the cell's full. When the cell is full, it can't store any more energy. What happens is it becomes resistant to insulin storage message. And so those cells are insulin resistant. But here's the irony for our brain, and this is not good, <laughs> that when brain cells become insulin resistant, uh, they literally shut down and they're, stop, they're not able to use glucose as energy. So if I did a PET scan on you and looked at your brain and gave you some problems to solve or an article to read, your brain would, I know you, your brain would look up, light up like a Christmas tree, bright and active. But for insulin resistant, it looks much darker, much quieter, far less activity going on. In other words, there's cognitive dysfunction, brain cell dysfunction. And over time, that leads to brain cell death. And literally, the brain starts to shrink. Just, we don't want shrinking brains. That's bad. So <laughs> that's the challenge is how do we make it, you know, how do we stop insulin resistance? What are the five steps to give you a better brain? And that's what this book is all about. Terrific. So you have five steps. Well, run us through those five steps. The five steps to really maintain better brain function as we age, which is so important to all of us. Well, number one is food. I always like to focus on food. I know you do too. Mm -hmm. So things like plant pigment sources like green leafies and berries and cherries, that these colorful pigments are really good for our brain. In fact, if you eat one cup of green leafies every day, on average, your brain would be 11 years younger than someone who doesn't eat them. I mean, 11 years is a lot. 
a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we want nuts, that nuts are good for your brain. And so is extra virgin olive oil. It's anti-inflammatory. So we want smart fats. We want long chain omega-3 fats like we get from fish oil. Mm -hmm. that, um, your brain is 40% made of these long chain omega-3 fats by weight. So fish oil is really helpful, which we can get from eating like um, wild uh, Alaska salmon, from sardines, from mussels, from oysters, from, you know, foods that are in cold water with these omega-3s. So there's tea, green tea is good for our bones. And it's also good for our, um, our brain. I mean, those, the pigments in green tea are really good for um, that. So there's clearly food, and then a probiotic source is also, I, mean, I have a dozen foods outlined in the Better Brain Solution. I see, so in the and book- just examples of some of the foods we wanna add. And you talk about some of the key foods that people want to add so they can see those all in the book. Great, great. And they're very think about Some of those foods in bone. We want, you know, pigments and fiber and anti-inflammatory foods to help our bone. So they're good for your bone, but they're all, and good for your brain at the same time. The omega-3s, I think that by lowering inflammation, they're good for bone health. I, I, I read your blog and I love your blog. So I, I you know, I mean, kind of in tuned, and I'm always amazed when you say, oh, this is really good for your bones. I'm thinking, oh, that's great for your heart or your brain too. So I really, exactly. really into that. I'm following you along and kind of seeing this, these relationships. And so how about exercise? It must be an overlap there with exercise being great for brain health as well as for bone health. Well, just like for bones, we see a benefit from aerobic, you know, like weight bearing activity. We all see a benefit from strength training. Your right. brain's no different. Both of those have an independent, it, and it didn't come down to minutes. Mm -hmm. We didn't see any relationship with how many pe people minutes are active. What we saw, the fitter you are, the more better your aerobic performance, the better your brain function, and the faster your brain and the better memory you have, and also the more muscle mass and strength you have, the better. So independently, those are both really important for your brain. Right, right, right. And there were several nutrients that I think were very powerful, um, all of which, many of which are good for your, you know, vitamin D, magnesium, um, the B vitamins, especially B12 and mixed folate. Right, right, right. Um, methylation issues are really important for the brain and probably have some impact on bone as well. And um, fish oil, as I've already mentioned, um, you know, those were all really critical um, nutrients. And, and I really like the idea of a probiotic for a healthy gut. To help maintain a healthy brain as well. So those are like critical nutrients for brain health. And almost all of those, I think I've heard you at some point recommend for bone health too. That's right. There's a terrific overlap you're showing us between things that are going to help you maintain great memory, great brain health, and bone health. So we know the exercise, we know all these details on nutrition. We certainly probably are thinking about stress reduction. What else is what else did you discover in your book, Steve? Well, stress reduction turns out to be pretty important. I mean, when we have high cortisol levels because uh, we're stressed and we're not managing it, I'm not against stress because I think all of us need purpose and challenge. But if you don't manage it, your cortisol tends to be high, and right. cortisol makes your muscle mass drop, your bone mass drop, your right. blood sugar go up, and blood sugar is the number one cause for memory loss, and it literally shrinks your brain. So right. if we don't manage our stress, that has a really negative impact on both our brain and our bones. Exactly, that's a very good point. And you're emphasizing the blood sugar so much. So do you agree with those that say that dementia is really like a type three diabetes? Absolutely. I mean, when we have elevated blood sugar levels, we are, people who have high blood sugar are much more likely to get Alzheimer's. If you have diabetes, you're 300% more likely to get Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. And here's the thing, it's so common today. 50% of all baby boomers, that's probably most of your audience, I'm guessing, right. most of mine, um, the people that follow me, and 30% of all adults have insulin resistance. They're pre-diabetic. Right. So right. think about it, if 50% of your and my followers have insulin resistance, they're high risk for memory loss, heart disease, diabetes, and probably bone loss too. Sure, sure. So yes. we've, yeah, so my number one priority is to stop, reverse, prevent insulin resistance for half the population. So a huge amount, of, enormous amount of people 
are high risk for memory loss, which is the most serious disease we have in America today. And that's why it's projected the fact that blood sugar levels keep rising in the population every year. That's one of the main reasons, primary reasons, that memory loss is supposed to double in just the next 12 years alone. So this is so terrific. Just to kind of from our point of view, we'd say all the components of the Better Bones, Better Body program, the exercise, the diet, the great use of specialized supplements, the stress reduction will also help memory. The one uh, really refined twist that you've brought to us is really start paying attention to your blood sugars and really work to get those blood sugars into very acceptable ranges. And maybe later we'll, we'll talk, we'll, I'll do some blogs on the blood sugar ranges, but that is a simple place to start. And of course, by modifying your diet right away to start removing these refined carbohydrates, the sugars, all the sweets and processed foods. Yeah, I and I'd say all the 12 foods we really, I focus on in the Better Brain Solution that, that are good for your brain. I think all 12 of those are good for your, um, bones as well. So Steve, as in, clo in closing, show us once more your book, because I know many of the people in our group are going to think, I want bone health, but I want to stay alert and happy in my elder years. We're, we're, we're helping people have strong bones forever. You're going to help them have a strong brain. Well, and the yeah. data from our clinic is not only are we preventing memory loss, but in a short period, like within 30 days, our average patient is 25% sharper, quicker, they have better brain processing speed. It's almost like we gave someone a faster computer and said, you can work with this now. And you know, literally, they're sharper, uh, quicker, more productive, not just preventing memory loss, they actually get a better brain from almost the first day of trying this. And you've used so many markers to prove that. So I wanna thank you very much for your work. I think it's important for all of us. Let's get, the, let's get Steve's new book, Dr. Masley's new book, The Better Brain, and let's pay attention because we want to stay vital for a long, long time. Thank you again, Steve. Thank you. Really appreciate your, your help in getting the word out. We're all on the same team. Talk to you later.